those of you with video recorders, where did you get the money? <laughs> now, I am Victoria Wood. This is Hooli Walters. Good evening. Now, the original title for the show was Two Creatures Great and Small. Oh, Wood is thicker than Walters. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is our orchestra. Or to give them their correct technical title, the lads. They were assembled in the usual fashion, with me hanging out of an upstairs window in Soho in a half-cup bra with a megaphone. <laughs> now we have Harry on drums, Bill on guitar, Albert on the radiator because we're short of chairs. And our musical director, Mr Jim Parker, on antidepressants. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it... The band will be starting with Rock Around the Clock, but due to the overtime ban, they'll be stopping at 10 to 11. Um, <laughs> and Sasha Distel will be stopping at home. Yeah, but that's not because of the economy, that's because we didn't want it. Oh, shh. Well, he can't hear. He's in gay Paris. But just in case, Sasha, Sasha. Ooh la la, coup d'etat and bradre anglaise. <laughs> yeah? Right. Now, right then, I'm doing my song now. Yes, right. OK, right. right. Yes, right. You. Hang on. Yeah. What do you want? I don't want to stop singing. I do this one. Oh, I've got to join in. I can do your backing. I've already done my backing, pacing your skirting bush. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Verse three, you two. OK, all right. See you, everybody. Just stop. Have we got time for a quick... All right. Cheer up. Never been a one to have a carry-on When I felt merry. Don't wear funny hats. I'll get a bit far gone. And champagne perry. And I've never blown those squeaky things. The ones with feathers on the end. Trying to show them happy drives me round the bend. Never like those meals that you're supposed to eat For celebrating Irish coffee, tiny chips and lumps of meat And me kept waiting, tell me what could be to put a cheese on a Rivita In front of the TV When it comes to celebrating there's something wrong with me I'd really like to show you that I'm glad I've come with If you understand me I could stick a label happy on my bum Where would it land me? I'd love to be the kind of person that Could absolutely go berserk But somehow for me I don't think it would work Should I stick whoopee upon a greetings card And self-address it I find feeling very jolly rather hard I can't express it I can't run along that street and do a conga Only wish I could You just have to take my word that I feel good Unless you are an idiot You've got the gist George Formby Say it's turned out nice I was wondering if, by any chance, you were Miss J. Harper. That's correct. Oh, smash it. I found you at last. Uh, uh, may I sit down? I'm waiting for someone, thank you. Oh, that should be me. I'm from the agency. The computer dating? Yes. But I'm waiting for Bill Smith. Yeah, I'm he. Well, you can sit down till Bill comes. <laughs> Is that a Persian name? <laughs> no, I'm Bill Smith. Oh, I see. It's, uh, it's taken me some time to spot you. You're looking rather inconspicuous in this dark corner. It's very charming of you. <laughs> uh, actually, I thought the agency said that we should both wear uh, buttonholes. Well, I've got five on my coat, and goodness knows how many on my card, eh? <laughs> well, I, would, uh, I wore a flower in mine. Well, that was a nice idea. Melanie from the agency said that you were interested in meeting someone who, who was well qualified academically. Hmm. Well, I've got a BSc. Oh, just the one? What grade? Well, I got a first, actually. Oh, well, that's practically an O level, isn't it? <laughs> well, I went to university. Did you? I was thinking of going, but my mother thought I'd get better lunches in an office. 
Well, I'm sure I won't match up to your talents. Artistic, musical, keen interest in current affairs, sportswoman. I'm surprised I haven't read about you in the papers. No, I've had my fair share of publicity. Really? Oh, yes, been a bridesmaid twice. Blue chiffon with trumpet sleeves, mauve taffeta with pin tucked above this. And I've been mugged. Really? <laughs> Badly? Oh, no, I think he did his best. <laughs> Uh, tell me what kind of sports you like. I'm rather uh, interested in uh, scuba diving. Oh, well, I used to be, but really, to be frank, I got so good at it, it was scubas for every meal. <laughs> These days, I'm happy at home with my sculpture. Oh, well, what are you working on at the moment? Well, I do Paddington Bear, mainly. He comes out of the mould quite easily, doesn't have too many colours. <laughs> Says in a car, you're fond of music. Well, I'm rather Philistine myself, Jacques Lussier, Cacicharian. Oh, now, he's good. I've got one of his things at home, the Green Lady. I love painters. Picasso, de Bonnet. My mother says, I'm that mad on pictures you could frame a painting of a Campbell's tomato soup tin and I'd buy it. Do you like money? Well, I spend it when I've got it, obviously. <laughs> Shall I order? Sorry, that was a rather sexist remark. I do think the women's movement is, uh, is, uh, is interesting. Don't you agree? Oh, absolutely. Mm. Well, what shall we have to drink? Um, well, you decide. You're the man. <laughs> well, since it's rather a special occasion, um, how about a magnum of champagne? Oh, fine. Though I mustn't have more than two. <laughs> uh, some pate to start? Why not, as long as you take the claws off for me? Excuse me, sir. Are you on the table boat, and is yours the bourbon? I left mine in the cloakroom and mine's a red cortina. <laughs> My name is Dorothea Chubb, Dottie, Dottie by name. And this is my problem slot. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, can we change that? I've never liked it. This is the point in the programme where I shall be dealing with your problems. The little difficulties we all face as we ladder the tides of life. <laughs> now, for those of you who want to know my qualifications, I am, in fact, the co-authoress of the book, Weathering Womanhood. <laughs> covers many topics, from obtaining a mortgage to getting the brill cream out of your corsets. <laughs> now, oh, £2.99 limp covers only. Now, thank you all for sending me your little queries. Um, the subjects are very varied. Should I travel overland to Morocco, even though it might be uncomfortable? How does one carry off an unfamiliar social situation? How can I make mackerel appetising? And how do I care for a rubber plant? Well, as we're short of time, I shall just say to you, rough it, bluff it, stuff it, and keep it well watered. <laughs> I'm speaking to you now, Tracy. Tracy is feeling the strain of a four-year engagement and wonders if it might be possible to have intercourse under the circumstances. Now, where you have it, Tracy, is neither here nor there. <laughs> but there are alternatives, as Daddy and I well know. <laughs> now, Tracy, let me stress that I'm in no way narrow-minded or behind the times. Daddy and I were the first people in our crescent to have a walk. And <laughs> I do feel that intercourse, or nooky, as you young people like to call it, can be a very pleasant way of spending those few minutes between the end of your old routine and the next chapter of your Mills and Boone. But <laughs> there are so many other things to do. I say to young people, as I call them, develop an interest, a hobby. Keep those hands busy. <laughs> My motto is this. If it's small, stick clothes in it. If it's big, use it as a doorstop. And if you're married to it, measure it for a girl's <laughs> I tell you this, if I had nothing to do, I wouldn't know what to do. Where is the pleasure in days of leisure? You'll soon feel flat and bored. Life can be busy. If you get busy, work is its own reward. At first it seems appealing, staring at the ceiling, but when hubby leaves, you'll soon feel blue. If you don't 
want a job, be smart and get a hobby. There's so many things. creative for you. <laughs> Very pretty pair. Handicrafts can save your life. Get a bit of lino and a Stanley knife. Some fur fabric, paper can foam. You'll be happy stuffing pandas till the cows come home. Glue foreign scats on old lab shades. They come model of the QE2 from hearing names. With some heather and a feather and some bits of shampoo. Learn disco dancing if you dare. Some ladies bring their heart pills in a Tupperware. Do the Spanish hustle, get some muscle on your bustle. Just boogie, baby, come on strong. Take it away, Jim. on those infants. Will you see? They're so low. I feel like a native. Oh, <laughs> sure something's oh. gone in my back. What a hook? No, pulled something. It was in autumn leaves. Had my elbow over my head. Yes. Speaking of which, Mrs. Harris doesn't, does she? Not apply a razor to the... Uh, apparently not. <laughs> Looks like something's hibernating in her armpit. <laughs> she wants telling. 18 stone, you want more round your top half than an outsized bandana. <laughs> you know in the floor exercises? Yeah. You know feet together, lift and hold for tummy tightening. Mm. There was a funny... There was, <laughs> wasn't there? I had Anthea to my left, I thought, no. It's just the odour of hot guy, Captain. <laughs> so you do get very aware of other people doing this. Just doing mm. the... Uh... Watching the anthropology programme last night, you know, was 300 primitive women dancing round in the Amazon, celebrating the most sacred ritual of the tribe all year. And all I could think was, look what happens if you don't wear a bra. <laughs> you drifted off just oh. now, during legs apart, lean back and forward for inner thigh and body. Oh. I saw you. <laughs> I had Leslie. She doesn't know her own strength. She's wrenching you forward, banging your nose on the parquet. But I'm bent over between her lower limbs, thinking... I must trim our privy. <laughs> I say, Mabel gets no better, does she? Yeah. At a puff bet! I... Yeah. She's so uncoordinated. A bloody can can. She's like Bruce Lee. <laughs> Three people kicked in the gullet and Mervis flung up against the advent calendar. Oh, we're off, we're oh. off. Come on. Oh, Elsie. 
written up again. It's too small. It must be very painful. No, no wonder she broke off her engagement. <laughs> Snip that crotch, she'd be a foot taller. <laughs> Sit now! Oh, and banana! <laughs> then, before we start, I would like to make it clear that we at Marriage Guidance do not attempt to offer solutions. Right to help. So, tell me how I can help you. Well, I wouldn't mind another fig roll, Bill. Uh, better not. Me and figs frightening. <laughs> well, would you like to discuss your relationship with me? What is your main worry? Permits. Uh, I'm sorry? Do we have them or don't we? Do we not and say, these are the tops of my curtains, take them or leave them? Or does Bill have a bash and leave corrugated contiboard in the kitchen doorway for three days and nearly break the ankle of a close relative again? Ah, Bill's untidiness bothers you. Oh, no, we've worked it out fairly well now, haven't we, Bill? Anything left where it shouldn't be gets soaked in paraffin and set fire to. <laughs> Excuse the question, but um, did you have to get married? Pardon? Uh, were you expecting a little one? Well, I'd seen something chalked up about him on the viaduct. <laughs> no, 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 I, no, I mean, were you pregnant? Oh, up to a point. Now, we weren't bothered. It was just my father threatening to castrate Bill with an antique fish slice if he didn't do the decent thing. We gave in and got married. And do you think it worked out well? Mm, if you call pigs trotters and a Swiss roll a running buffet. When did they stop to go on? Well, I think it was when Uncle Harold read out the telegram about the banana. No, 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 remark, no, 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 not the wedding. I mean, the relationship. For instance, I mean, do you share the same sense of humour? Well, it kept on smiling when I was in with my bosom trouble. Ah, surgery. Mm. Yes. Now, the separation must have affected your relationship. Well, I don't think any wife wants to come home from hospital to find the laundry basket full of uplift bras and the cooker covered in ferret droppings. <laughs> no. But these, these medical problems, have they affected your sex life? I mean, any bother there? Oh, no, no, because I gave it up in... Um, when was it, Bill? 1970. I'd just seen Carry On Camping and I thought, pack this up, Dorian, it's undignified. <laughs> you were never really any good at it, like. Oh, no, it was awful. Very amateurish. Facing the wrong way, nodding <laughs> off. She's made other arrangements. What's her name, Bill? Annie or something. Mm, she's very pleasant. She comes to your own home. She's very quick. And she'll post a pool scoop on for you. <laughs> I have to congratulate you two. I mean, you've had the most terrible problems to face and yet you're still together. You must really love each other. No, well, no, we don't. Do we, Bill? No. I'm sorry, but how did, how did you think I could help you? Well, to be honest, we were walking past. We looked up, we saw your window. Yes. We said, this is our chance. Yes. We won't be shy. We'll go straight in and say, where did you get your curtain track? <laughs> <laughs> the lady in this song, whose name is Judith Powell, has dashed down to the bathroom with a sponge bag and a towel has washed up and then wiped her knife her fork her plate having eaten fish cakes and not lost any weight has locked the bedside door turned off the ceiling lights put out tomorrow's cardigan tomorrow's pants and tights so it's nicely snuggled down with a pleasing lack of guilt. Judith with her wireless underneath the turquoise quilt. DJ in this song, his name is Douglas Fife, has dented his back bumper and had a huge row with his wife. Lost one of his tapes. You on the air at ten Put twelve pence in for coffee And got chicken soup again It's his phone in night tonight At which he's very bad But when asked for suggestions It was the one idea he'd had The lines are open now They're flooding to the booze All the rambling geriatrics an idol his name is Douglas Fife who since the death of Freddie Grisewood has been the focus of her life she decides that she will phone him tidies hair and powders face nips down the darkened stairway with ten pence just in case he says she has a nice voice may he say sexy yes 
Lucy May Asks her what she looks like In case they meet one day She admits she's tall and slender Blonde of hair and blue of eyes Says a bust is 37 Blows a kiss and says goodbye Say goodbye to Judith's shadow Short and stumpy up the stairs Grey hair spread upon the pillow Brown eyes closed in thankful prayer And say goodbye to our DJ The very useless Douglas Fife On his way home to a casserole And a huge row with his Doing. Um, it's all right, thank you. My appointment's with Michael. He's not here. He's gone home sick. I nearly want an hole in that bloody toilet. <laughs> Wouldn't bother me. I've had septic fingers and all sorts carried right on shampoo. And... Oh, well, well, perhaps Brian could cut my hair. He's off sick and all. <laughs> <laughs> they live together, you know. Gay. Don't bother me. I couldn't get steamed up about intercourse one way or the other. <laughs> or oh, do it, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong, but um, I don't smile or not. Um, is Maggie here? Or... They're all off sick. <laughs> Why? What happened? <sighs> Faulty hamburgers. <laughs> they sent out for them quarter pounders. Now, I don't touch them, because I know the bloke that makes them. And not only has he got boils and a finger <laughs> stool, but he told me what they were made of. <laughs> Gerbils. <laughs> Bollocks. I mean, I mean, it's all right post them on through your mum's letterbox for a laugh, but I mean, eat one crushed in a bun with a gherkin and a bag of chips on his trouble downstairs. You know what I mean? Do you want a pair, uh, No, I went before I came out, thank you. <laughs> it's an hairstyle. Oh, no thanks. <clears throat> well, we only do the popular styles, you know, so what do you want? For our faucets? <laughs> or Anne Shelton? Um, you got any photos I could look at? Get a few ideas. Yeah. It's my cousin on the big wheel. <laughs> She's wearing a rain hood. No, it's a bin liner. Uh... I don't think I want my hair like that, thank you. Oh, that's bloody horrible, isn't it? No wonder she killed herself. <laughs> uh, no, I only want it trimmed, thank you. <laughs> Going somewhere special tonight? No. There's not much point in me cutting it then, is there? <laughs> I'd like to get rid of my split ends. I'll burn them off. <laughs> Isn't that bad for your hair? Oh, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> oh, these bloody scissors are terrible. It's <laughs> not surprising. My granddad just had his annual bash at his toenail. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Um, I, th I think I'll just have it highlighted. Oh, I wouldn't bother. You get the same effect painting your bedroom ceiling with no hat on. <laughs> you could have it bleached all over. I mean, it looks all right, but it smells like someone slept on your head and wet the bed. <laughs> streaks. Oh, yes. I've always fancied red streaks in the air. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay. Can I see the back? Because you won't, otherwise, and it'll be an embarrassing mess. Oh, yes. That's what people who think songs should have rhymes. It doesn't happen a lot of times. In this song. Bong. That was another one. But if you're 28 and uh, overweight uh, with a brother called Kevin who lives uh, in Q8 and you always sit downstairs uh, upon the bus. Uh, or if you're a single guy and your shirt's stripped dry, got a sex maniac starring the vasectomy club tie, don't expect any sympathy from us. But when you're sitting there, moaning about the chairs, you've got Victoria was completely mixed up with Pamela's. We, we feel, feel that, that you have come to the, the wrong place. place. Or if you 
came for a treat. Rejoice complete. Except that the babysitter's running around naked on the pretty piece. Tweet, tweet. But try to bring a smile back to your face. We will now. Now the pop is thinking we should be better than this. You're stuck now till the end of it. Too bad if you wanted a wee. That was nearly another rhyme. Could be worse. Could be mime. Who needs Stephen Sondheim? From the ridiculous to the... What was it? Silly! That, that was, was a closing, closing number. number. Oh, God, stop!